What's up guys, Roman from RNS Entertainment. In this Game of Thrones epic history video, I'm gonna be going over Marine, the current seat of everyone's favorite Khaleesi, Daenerys Targaryen, as well as doing a small character spotlight on Strong Belwas, a book reader favorite that was left out of the show. I've had some requests for videos on more info on Marine, the Fighting Pits, or Strong Belwas, so I decided to put it all in one video for you guys. The history of Marine goes back to the ancient Giscari Empire, which was thousands of years old older than Valyria, where the dragons came from. In current day, Marine, Yunkai, and Astapor make up an area called Slaver's Bay in Essos. If you're not familiar with the continents or the way the world is set up in Game of Thrones, think about it as two main continents with one smaller continent that isn't referenced very much and at least one more major landmass that is never used in any of the main books. So basically just two main continents that you have to think about. Westeros, which is where the wall and Winterfell and King's Landing, all of that stuff is going on. And Essos, which contains Braavos and Slaver's Bay and several other areas. So Slaver's Bay is a pretty small area and it's only the remnants of the Giscari Empire. In its height, the Giscari Empire covered most of the entire continent. It was basically the ancient Egypt or ancient Rome of this continent. The Giscari Empire shares a number of similarities with both. It was built on the back of slave labor. Their architecture consists of giant pyramids devoted in their honor built by slaves. And their military force consisted of legions of highly disciplined soldiers called lockstep soldiers soldiers, similar to the Roman legion that held very tight formations. The lockstep legions were actually the inspiration for the Unsullied. The current day remnants of the Giscari Empire use very similar training methods for their Unsullied, which is why they're strict, they keep tight battle formations, they're very loyal, and in numbers they're incredibly effective. Rising from a single city of geese, the Giscari Empire grew into a military and economic force as it took over most of the continent of Essos. Eventually, the people of Valyria discovered dragons, and the Giscari Empire went into a series of five wars with the Valyrians before finally being defeated over 5,000 years before present time. In the final war, the Valyrians burned Geese and the surrounding lands to the ground, using salt and sulfur to create the deserted, harsh conditions that are present there today. The Giscari Empire collapsed and most of the original bloodline was wiped out entirely. The surviving people rebuilt what they could and eventually turned it into Astapor, Yunkai, and Marine, commonly known as Slaver's Bay. With the surrounding area essentially a scorched wasteland, Astapor, Yunkai, and Marine cornered the slave trade on a global level and grew extremely wealthy. The Giscari people of current time are a mongrel race of a dozen different peoples brought together by the Empire. This is blended together into a dense, dark, ambery skin color with wiry black and red hair that is unique to the region. Any ties the current day Giscari people have to their original culture are almost entirely severed. Their old religion, their old language are all forgotten. They now speak a dialect of High Valyrian, although they did retain the harpy as their symbol, replacing the original lightning bolt with open chains. So knowing the history between Slaver's Bay and the Giscari Empire and the ancient Valyrian people, which is where Daenerys Targaryen and her family are descended from, definitely gives you a little context for what's going on in the current time between her and that region. She is an upstart, young conqueror coming in much as Valyria did to old geese, conquering their cities, and this is a lot of the reason that they react so ridiculously to her. In Slaver's Bay, there's really no middle class. There are only the wealthy, masters, and the slaves. Although they do have citizen armies, these are mostly the spoiled sons of rich families pretending to be soldiers and parading around. Most of the military force of current day Slaver's Bay consists of hired mercenary companies, slave soldiers who are mostly ineffectual and poorly trained other than the Unsullied, who are notably consistent and effective. The wealthy ruling class of slave masters are described as lazy, fat, greedy people who are content to just sit around and talk about the glories of old Giscari Empire 
and the triumphs of their civilization while they were actually conquered and turned into a hub of slavery where the majority of their population lives in constant misery. Marine itself is the northernmost and largest of the three slaver cities, as big as both Astapor and Yunkai combined. Unlike Astapor and Yunkai, which are made of entirely red and yellow bricks respectively, Marine is made of bricks of many different colors. The walls around the city contain defensive towers at every angle, as well as giant bronze harpy statues with mouths that can pour boiling oil down on attackers. The dominating structure of Marine is the Great Pyramid. 800 feet tall, the Great Pyramid was made to mirror the ancient Giscari Great Pyramid, which was burned down by the Valyrians. It has 33 levels, which is a holy number to their ancient religion. The Great Pyramid is almost a city in and of itself, housing a large number of the upper upper class of Marine's ruling elite, as well as a host of slaves and servants. There are a number of other pyramids in Marine, but none stand nearly as tall. Each major family has their own pyramid, with the size corresponding to how much power that family has. West of the Great Pyramid is the Temple of the Graces. This is a huge temple topped with golden domes, similar to real-life Middle Eastern temples back in the day. The other major landmarks and attractions in Marine are the Fighting Pits, huge circular arenas that exist in all three of the slave cities, though Marines are by far the largest and most extravagant. The Fighting Pits are where the slaver cities conduct ancient Roman-style gladiator matches, pitting beasts against beasts, gladiators against other gladiators, and beasts against gladiators for the entertainment of the crowd. The gladiators are permitted no armor, as it is blood the crowds come to see. This leads me into my mini-character spotlight for Strong Belwas. If you haven't read the books, you're probably wondering who Strong Belwas is. He was cut from the show, but in the books he's a very interesting supporting character for Daenerys. Strong Belwas is a veteran ex-pit fighter who fought in the gladiator arenas of Marine. He was born and bred in Marine as a slave, castrated so he is a eunuch similar to Varus. He's a large, huge guy. He's supposed to be about three times the size of Daenerys, much taller than her. He's got a huge chest, tree trunk sized arms, and a fat, fat belly that he's always smacking and laughing as he fights. In battle, he uses one of the Dothraki Aurex swords, the curved scythe type blades, as well as a small plate sized shield that he holds in his hand instead of strapping to his arm. His strategy is to always let his opponents cut him one time before going on a complete offensive and destroying them. He walks around with a yellow sash, a small little tiny vest, and no shirt, showing off all of the scars he's gotten from his battles. He tells Daenerys that if she wants to know how many men he's killed, to count the number of scars on his body. Belwas was eventually sold several times and sent away from Marine to Kohor and eventually to Pentos, where he was bought by Illyrio Mopatis, the former contributor of Viserys and Daenerys Targaryen. In the books, Illyrio sends Belwas along with three ships to meet up with Daenerys and Karth, protect her, and bring her back to Pentos. So instead of Barristan Selmy just showing up and announcing himself in Karth like what happened on the show, Belwas actually shows up to Danny with his squire, Arston Whitebeard, which turned out to be Barristan Selmy in disguise. From this point on, Strong Belwas is always by Daenerys' side, becomes one of her main companions as well as one of her queen's guard. Remember that scene in the show where Marine sent their champion out with the lance and the horse, and Daenerys sent Dario up to fight him? In the books, that was totally Strong Belwas. Strong Belwas is her champion, the other guy rides in, Belwas takes out the horse, ends up chopping the guy's head off after letting him cut him once, shows the head off to the people of Marine, takes a shit on the ground towards the city, and wipes his ass with the white cloak of their champion. So, he took it a step further than Dario did in the show, which, you know, nobody wants to see a big fat guy shit on camera, but <laughs> it was a really funny moment, and Belwas is a crazy character. Belwas also turns out to be largely important in the Siege of Marine. He was one of the main people that Daenerys sent in through the sewers 
to take the city, and they use his extensive knowledge of the fighting pits and of Marine to travel through the city unnoticed, to find the fighting slaves within the fighting pits, the gladiators, and convince them to join Daenerys' cause. Strong Belwas remains a central character to the Daenerys storyline in the books to this very day, and I think it's a major mistake leaving him out of the show. I did talk about him a little bit in my video about Lady Stoneheart not appearing. Many fans agree with me that Strong Bell Wass is one of the major things that should have been included in the show but weren't. So this pretty much wraps up my epic history for Marine and the Old Giscari Empire, as well as my mini character spotlight for Strong Belwas. The Miranese and Giscari culture is interesting. I love how George R. R. Martin has set up a full and complete world, complete with histories and backstories for all of the different regions we get introduced to. The reminiscence of the ancient Romans and the ancient Egyptians is really cool, and I think he's created a nice, foil to the Westerosi civilization. If you've got any Game of Thrones epic history or character spotlight videos you want to recommend, leave it in the comment section below. I always try to listen to requests and I want to make content that you guys want to see. So let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section below. Make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you like the video, if you want to see more cool stuff, check out some of the other epic histories, character spotlights, etc. I've got up for Game of Thrones, as well as weekly review and recap caps, character spotlights, epic histories, for a lot more cool shows like Arrow, The Flash, Gotham, American Horror Story, The Walking Dead, comic books, movies, and a lot more. So I hope you enjoyed this epic history video on Marine. Hope you learned a little bit more about the Game of Thrones universe than you did before you watched it. This is Roman from RNS Entertainment. Take it easy, guys.